So today I'm going to take you to the city of Turon. It's a place I'd never heard of, I'll be completely honest, and I am so glad I went there. Um, you know, during this his this video, I, you know, intend to tell you about my impressions, uh, a bit about the history, a bit about the sites, and to really, you know, give you a flavour uh, for this city. It is certainly one I would recommend seeing in Poland. In fact, it's perhaps one of the most beautiful cities I've seen and really can't recommend this place enough. You know, maybe for a short visit, but wait and see. One major claim to fame this city has is it is the birthplace of Nicholas Copernicus. And for those that don't know who that is, he was the one of the first guys to basically figure out that you know, the earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. One of the things I love about this city is the fact that pretty much every street has something. You know, there are little statues everywhere. There are, you know, some very interesting buildings. You, you know, I, it was hard, I was hard pressed to find anywhere in the city that wasn't worth seeing. So it's literally worth going up and down those streets to get a good picture. So I'm going to take this point to tell you a bit about the history. So uh, Turin is actually one of the oldest cities in Poland, dating back to the 8th century. And it's actually considered one of the most beautiful cities in Europe, being a World Heritage Site uh, by UNESCO and part of the Seven Wonders of Poland. And you can really see that when you walk around. I hope this video does that justice. So um, it belonged to the Hanseatic League from 1264 to 1411, became a, you know, elite trading point in the 17th century, uh, became part of Prussia for a while and finally returned to uh, Poland in 1918 and was luckily spared the bombing and destruction of World War II. You will find all kinds of architecture here, brick Gothic, mannerism, Renaissance and Baroque architecture. But one of the, the most noticeable points um, that you'll see is the Teutonic history. So actually, you know, the Teutonic Knights, they uh, pretty much occupied and expanded the city in 1233 AD. They stuck around until 1454, when they were pretty much uh, kicked out as part of a rebellion, um, which was kind of spearheaded by the Prussian Confederation. This castle here was actually one of the first built in, you know, in this whole uh, territory, and the construction took over a hundred years. And it was the, the residence of a Teutonic commander for the most part. And of course, it was part of the, the massive fortifications which protected the city of Turin. There are a lot of sights to see in the city. You've got uh, cathedrals of John the Evangelist and John the Baptist, St. Mary's Church, St. Peter's Church, uh, massive city uh, fortifications that were begun in the 13th century and worked on right until the 15th. There are over 10 major museums here, um, planetarium, astronomical observatory, and in fact, they hold the largest radio telescope in Europe. Sadly, you know, I went here during the times of COVID, so I couldn't really go into the museums, but it's a good reason to go back.
One of the main sites um, is something called the Leaning Tower. So this used to be a watchtower, uh, primarily. And it's called the Leaning Tower because the top is actually 1.5 meters away from where it would be if it was a perfectly vertical structure. Built in the 13th century, and the reason it tilts is it was built on loamy ground, so it's kind of silty ground, so it's kind of subsided, uh, basically. Um, it housed a blacksmith shop, and it, at one point was an apartment for a gunsmith. You know, it's worth viewing from different angles to really appreciate the tilt. Now, one specific shout out I want to give out to is uh, to this shop called Emporium. Okay, so it's a souvenir shop, but the owner was very friendly. He gave us this little map of uh, Turin to basically solve a little puzzle. So we had to go around the city looking for these uh, symbols and matching them to letters and then spelling a word. And our prize? A couple of postcards. It was a bit of fun, a great way to kill about an hour. Now, one thing that you will certainly experience when you're here is gingerbread or pianic. And this is a, you know, a very famous thing in Toronto. In fact, you will find that there are a lot of shops dedicated to it, as you can see here. And this was produced from the Middle Ages and it was a favorite delicacy of Chopin, apparently. And it contains one of the only museums of gingerbread in the world where if you can go in, you can make your own using traditional molds and you will be guided by the master of bakery, a gingerbread witch and the craftsman. This city really is wonderful. Um, you know, there's a lot of evident history, you know, in, in the, uh, the architecture you see around. You know, there's um, a lot of beauty here. Uh, some kind of nice gardens, uh, you know, lots of statues, sculptures, you know, even the buildings themselves are nicely decorated. And as I said before, there's lots of things just hidden around the city that it's definitely worth exploring. One thing that we found um, on our last day, of course, the, uh, the city is on the Vistula. So you have this lovely expanse of river and they have the boulevard like they do um, here in Warsaw. And we went a bit off the beaten track and went to explore. And wow, you know, okay, so maybe in places there was some rubbish uh, thrown around, but on the whole, you know, you can just go out by the river, nice kind of wooded areas. It was fairly quiet. 
and it was just lovely to sit in the sun, watch the, the river flowing and to just relax. 